One of our favorite cars that just showed up here, 1969 Dodge Charger. This is a Dukes of Hazard car. This car holds the record for the longest jump of any General Lee in any of the Duke television series and or movie. If you remember the freeway jump in the movie with Jessica Simpson, you'll remember this car. That's what we got going on at Graveyard Cars. You got any questions? Good. This time on Graveyard Cars witness the resurrection of this one-of-a-kind Mopar icon, the freeway jump car from the 2005 Dukes of Hazard movie, the car that set the record for the longest General Lee jump in TV and film history. Watch every phase of this incredible three-year restoration as the ghouls repair, rebuild, and restore what is arguably the most recognizable Mopar on the planet. Amazing. Is that awesome? On this episode of Graveyard Cars. The unburied dead are coming back to life. I'm Mark Warman. And together we bring dead muscle cars back to life. To exactly the way they were on the day they were born. Our 1969 Dodge Charger General Lee. So this one was a, a factory Hemi Orange car, interestingly enough, but it was converted over to be one of the stunt cars in the 2005 movie. And so, you know, amazingly, when that car came down, it actually held up pretty well, and I think a lot of it has to do with the inner structure. Yeah, but yeah. as messed up as the car was, that's why it ended up at Graveyard Cars, because that's what we do. We restore dead cars and bring them back to life. They just haven't all been shot out of a cannon. The water be great. Full. If you recall, we water had a hard awesome. time back then getting water. anything done in the shop. You remember why? Yes, I do. Besides for equipment, we had <laughs> we had other yes, problems uh, staying on task. Well, once again, it's Darren and myself left to do all the work together. And, and Mark and Royal are off looking at some new building or something like that. I don't know. Anyways, they're gone. They're not here. They're playing patty cake. And now we're getting the, the tires pumped up on the General Lee car. And, uh, you know, we're gonna get this puppy rolled around to the other side, get it up on the bend pack. And if they don't return here soon, Darren and I are just gonna start disassembling this thing on our own. <laughs> Lift it up! And, and you know, when it comes to, <laughs> my old friends, and it was a little bit like that you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make a drink, right? So I buy him equipment, like a forklift, let's say for example, but you have to know how to use the forklift and have the desire to use the forklift. Nobody wanted to use it because the brakes didn't work. That's a secondary note. Oh. Gosh, I can't tilt it anymore. There, there you goes. go. Jeez. You know, when we needed help again, Mark was not anywhere to be found. I found out later he'd went to look at a new building. He should maybe, you know, take care of the building he's got right now instead of looking for a new building. This thing's done. We're not using this. We're going to push it the old-fashioned way. If you don't want to help, go home. And wisdom has not kicked in yet for Josh, so he's still operating on just strength. This is the hardest way we could have done this in the world, isn't it? Just cut it to the left, Darren. Trying, okay, buddy. So if you recall, when we were, we, you and I actually came over here to this building. Uh -huh. While we were gone, looking at the building to make a decision if our company could move forward and this would be the right business decision, Bro. what was supposed to be happening? They were supposed to be getting the car around and into the shop and being disassembled. Disassembled is good. Didn't get disassembled. Why is the car not a part? Here's the thing, I'm not a detective. If I was, I'd probably be Columbo, right? The bumbling idiot that always solves the crime. But it doesn't take an hour to push a car around. We were gone for an hour. Car, why yeah, is the car, car not a part? And why haven't man? to come back and find out that that's all they had managed to get done? Holy he did not story. want to use the forklift. I'm bringing it over here. So we had to push it over by hand. 
Yeah, that forklift that we have, no, that's going to kill it. somebody, man. Well, I mean, I drive it every day, dude. It's We've been a gone an hour. deal while you were gone. You want to say I'm fat? Say I'm fat. Get it you're all fat. out. You're fat. Great. I'm overweight. I need to and eat a salad. Boy, you know, we got problems. Me and you Royal. Look like you, turd. you look like your turd floating in the toilet. Yeah. You got a bowl on his face. Yeah, head. this is great. But let's not forget, you've had the thing for an hour, and you haven't even started working on it yet. So the ritual of insanity back then was always the same. No matter how hard you tried to, to approach this situation, find out what happened calmly and rationally, the first thing is Josh would start screaming, and then Darren would start cheering him on. And then the it, it, I was the bad guy. It would start escalating. It would go from, hey, I wonder what took so long, to I'm going to kill you in your sleep. I mean, it seems like there should have been something in between those That's two. That's a little insane. It doesn't leave you anywhere to go. When you get all of us in a room together, there's going to be conflict. And it's easy for Mark to rile Josh up. And then Mark always gets Royal going also. Me, I'm usually the calm one. You guys. What did I do? No, Royal, Royal, you've done it. Give me your microphone. Mm -hmm. Seriously? Give me your microphone. Turn it off. You know, Royal grew up uh, with me. We were about 12 when we met, and so he's known me uh, my whole life. And you know that my job is to build people up and make them think anything is possible. You do a great job. Yeah. So anyway, it's, so you can see why it's so surprising to me when I have that kind of a pushback, when I'm really just there to build them up and make them think anything is possible, right? I'm trying to give them the wind beneath their wings, not to go all bed Midler on their ass, but you know what I mean? Huh. Bed Midler? Most people don't. You know, Mark wanted to have a tune-up talk with us, so he takes us over in the corner and starts chastising everyone except myself. He said, Royal and Josh, you need to be more like Darren and not be a troublemaker. You know, he said, look at Darren for leadership and not himself, to be more like me. And everything seemed to go pretty good after that. What did you say? Well, thank you for asking. I told them that if they didn't get their act together, I was going to shove a fistful of Mentos up their ass and give them a Diet Coke enema. Ooh. So now we're getting ready to start disassembling the 1969 Dodge Charger from the Dukes of Hazard movie. This is the actual freeway launch car. This is a really cool, it's got a great backstory on it. Hazard Productions had actually ordered the car to be built by a gentleman back in the Midwest. This particular car has some reinforcements in it so that it would have survived that big jump that you see at the end of the movie. We're gonna try to take those out carefully, clean them up, straighten them out, and put them back in as the car's getting restored. So right now, this is kind of a fun part. We've been looking forward to doing it for a while, and the guys are uh, actually in a really good mood, and everybody's getting along really well right now. So uh, uh, looks like a, a new day at Graveyard Cars. Coming up, sparks will fly and suspensions will fall as the General Lee Freeway Jump Car continues its transformation. And still to come, Mark may have gone too far with the General Lee's owner. Well, the thing, the thing like on that particular car, disassemblies typically are just assembly in reverse, right? I mean, they had already welded things in place, like the front bumper was welded in place. The front yeah. bumper brackets, the frame rails were okay. welded to the brackets. Uh, I mean, it was quite a bit bigger job. So it probably was best that you and I were involved. Or My guess is there would have been nothing but a molten pile of orange dust with two screaming idiots in the middle of it. Ah! Ah, stop it! And by then they'd be dead. Yeah, they'd be on fire. Yeah. This Darren's on fire. It's like that song. Let's get the rear end out of it. Let's get the seats out of it. I don't know how those seats are bolted in. Those are not the original seats. <laughs> They're probably welded in. It was a bit humbling because it was a real movie car. I mean, I. Oh yeah, it was a show we grew up with. It's a movie car. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's hard not to let that kind of touch you a little bit because we're just a couple guys from the neighborhood. 14th Street, he was down on 7th Street. I was between E and F, he was between D and E. Is that right? Yep. Yep. Couple kids from the neighborhood. Good memory. Living on 7-Eleven write-off food. Woo! Are you okay? 
You gotta be careful when you're using a torch in tight places. That's what was happening there with the torsion bars, is you're in the side of a pocket, there's no room to move around. So I'm trying to cut this thing. The oxygen and the, and the acetylene blow up and blow back at you, and then that causes a miniature explosion. That's why I was taking these spark showers. You know, the average guy would have all this protective stuff on. I have my bolets on, just because my eyes are invaluable. They're the best set of eyes in the world when it comes to restoring Chrysler muscle cars. So, you know, it, it, it's kind of funny too, because for all the fighting and all the things that were happening at the time, I still remember having kind of a moment as we were taking it apart, thinking to myself that, you know, we've got, come a long way. From, oh, yeah. from where it started is, you know, just the idea to have a, a little program and, and restore cars to this being our primary source of work and then being able to film it and, you know, share all the stories with people. Oh man, everything's bent right in the way. Oh no. Uh, Darren, will you stop no. that? Darren, what the No, what the is wrong with you? Yeah, hold still. Don't... Where do we start? No, what is wrong with you, really? You know, the, the thing about it is, and I still don't know to this day, 30 years after the day I met him, what the hell's wrong with him? A guy's trying to take the front suspension out, and you're trying to tip the car. What goes on in his head? I don't know. You know, that's You understand uh, that. What'd you do with the torch earlier? You sick you bastard. Did you anybody get hurt? You sick. You're sick. Oh, no. So after the craziness, after rocking the car and trying to kill somebody, because that's what he does, because in my, his mind, that's funny, right? We were actually able to get the rest of the car disassembled. That front end coming off there was a I think that son of a is welded in there. The front bolts, when I took the front bolts of the K-member out, I noticed it didn't drop at all. That made me suspicious. Well, it turns out, on top of everything else being welded, they actually welded the K-member to the frame rails. So the most dangerous part right now will be cutting those welds loose and hopefully not dropping the engine on your hand because you got to have it up in the air a little bit to be able to get onto it with a torch, so. Very close. Yep. Hold it. Can you roll that forward? Roll what? See, Mark, just wanted to ruin a call. Get away. Watch out, man. He's a crazy man. <laughs> Well, he wanted to cut the column. You know, I know that the Dukes of Hazard car is the most recognized Mopar in, in, in the world. So I think with, here at Graveyard Cars, we're lucky to be able to work on that particular car. I no, know. I was going to cut the coupler, you idiot. They make oh. new couplers. You're so stupid. <laughs> Let's go over the row, right? Iceman. I don't know. We're getting close now, though. We're just finishing on the uh, probably 45 minutes. I think it's loose. <laughs> Uh, now. After we got that car disassembled, I had called the owner and I let him know that uh, we were going to be in a bit of a hiatus because, as you recall, it was quite a change to graveyard cars, not just the fact that we had to move, but we had staff changes, we had oh, equipment yeah. changes, we had employee changes, so uh, it got put on the back burner. Hey guys, what movie was the Dukes of Hazzard TV series based on? Was it A, Dirty Mary, Crazy Larry, was it B, Moon Runners, or C, Trisket? Stay tuned, because the answer's coming up after the break. So what movie was the Dukes of Hazzard TV series based on? The answer is Moon Runners. Moon Runners is a 1975 film about the apparently true life exploits of two moonshining brothers and their sexy cousin. It even starred Waylon Jennings. Dirty Mary Crazy Larry was a classic Peter Fonda film that featured a 1969 Charger. If you haven't seen that one, you gotta go check it out. Trisket, yeah, it's a cracker. It's not a movie. You need to get out more if you pick that one. We made changes. If you look at this place, it is not even oh. any kind of a reflection of what we did in the past. Yeah. Look at look That's at the so staff. We got the top top notch staff probably in the country. I would say for me in the country. We have the top facility. We have inventory like we never had. We have organization. If you look around this place, everything has a place, and there's a place for everything. Everything's in it, in its place. Look at the cars. What we used to do in one year, which was one car, we've been in here exactly two years. And in two years, we've done 12 cars. Just some of them 
How about Garth's 1970 Dodge Challenger, the beautiful plum crazy white top four speed 446 pack? Guy Melita's 1970 Hemi Dodge Charger FK5 Burn Orange. That's favorite. just since we've been in here. That's just since we've been in here, absolutely. We had our uh, 69 Hemi Roadrunner Turquoise. I mean, one of, what, eight that was ever made, the only one in that color. We had Mark and Elena's 1970 Cuda, 383 Automatic. That's the first one out. That was the first car that got out. I think that was the first episode we filmed over here at the shop. Yep. Absolutely. We had Bob Moore's 7340 car, the one that got sabotaged. We had the 72 Charger uh, 400 four speed for Murray Goodings. Bill Goldberg, Big Bill, what can you say, right? Big Wild Bill Goldberg's 1968 GTX, gorgeous car. It's finished here. So, you know, that was uh, that was all the right decisions to make. You, you can't help but when you go back over that group and you talk about uh, the hero cars that came through, there were some beauties, but nothing quite like the honor of being called by Mopar to put oh. the very first crate Hemi with Absolutely. their controller in our world famous 1971 Cuda SEMA car. Yep. You know, so really at the end of it all, I mean, we had the SEMA car done, we had punched out all the others, we had met all of our commitments, we had an owner that was being patient with us, that generally it was time to move it back in, get it in line and start rocking on it. And when we did, it moved quick. It moved quick. In the interest of saving time, we've chose to go with what you see behind me, which is what we in the business call a front clip. This is the donor front clip. If this right now sitting the way it's sitting, we could put fenders on it, a hood on it, a front bumper or a grill, and it would look from the front like it's a complete car. But this is the inner structure, the skeleton, that we're gonna be grafting onto that car. But imagine you're gonna marry this windshield post with this windshield post, and it's gonna be seamless. Therefore, it has to be stepped out. This will be cut down to here. Then it'll have an inner structure piece that steps up to here. Then another one that steps up to here. And when you're all done, you'll put an outer piece back on it, all from original Mopar sheet metal, either that pillar or this pillar. And you will have this grafted together with the front end. So where we're at right now is uh, the body man has already started cutting and trimming the front inner structure that you see here. He'll continue to cut and trim, but you can see all of his measurements are here. All of his marks are here. These would be areas where they're making the step. So you have it going from here to here to here. He'll get this whole piece ready to go on the car. Then he'll cut the car part off, get it all cleaned up and prepped to receive this, and the two can become one. So right now, uh, Will and George are getting ready to help me and Ryan lift the front section of our charger off. So far, he's cut down here at the rocker on the outer portion, the inner portion of the rocker back here, because remember, he has to step it. Uh, he's got one more cut on the A pillar. I'm gonna let him do that now. Then he'll cut this pillar over here and we'll be able to lift this thing off of there. So Ryan, your green light, go. Beautiful. Where do we want to go? Right There's a car behind you, Vicarious. Right. Go back. Go back. Go back. Go back. Right here is fine. I'll drag Get it out. Right. Crazy right. Vicarious son of a bitch. Doing a good job, Georgie. You drilled out a lot of those spot welds, right? I am going to bless the union of this original 1970 Coronet front clip onto this 1969 Dodge Charger. Stay tuned, there's more metal work, a problem in the paint booth, and Mark gets a little revenge when the ghouls take the General Lee for a test drive. But does he go too far? We have been underdogs our entire life, so we always believe in rooting for the underdog and giving somebody a chance. So like in the case of George, he had no formidable skills. He was a welder. He, I should not say he had none. In the auto industry, he had none, but he was a great welder. And so we brought him in, and that General Lee, that was his proving grounds. And I worked with him, Ryan worked with him, we all worked together to make that happen. But that was, uh, that was my friend George's very first opportunity to do metal work on a, on a car versus like a locomotive or something else. And he did a phenomenal job. Okay, I see you've got marks, so is this your intention of coming up through the sail panel and the upper deck filler? Yep. Because we are replacing that. So when you cut that, you're destroying that. You know that, right? Yes, I do. Okay. Right. I figured I'd leave it for now for the height-wise because I'm going to cut out the whole entire wheelhouse. So it'll keep my height. So when I put the new wheelhouse in, I'll be able to oh, butt it up. Yep, I see what you're doing. Uh, so where are you coming? You coming right up through here? Is that what the paint mark is? Yep. 
So we're gonna come through here like this, and then you're gonna just go to the outside of this. That'll get you your access to your spot welds, right? Yep. And then just blow the whole thing off of there. This particular car, as you know, had so much trauma, so much blunt force trauma to it, that literally everything throughout the car was misshapen. The pieces that we've saved, we've saved well, but the ones that are sacrificial, those are the ones we're replacing. And then where you cut through the rails at. I'm gonna come right through here. Yep. All the way up through here, save Beautiful. all that. Yep. Just like a line. Just exactly, okay. So, and then you'll have to dissect out the rest of the trunk pan and the, and the frame rails for yep. that. Okay. And you know this is the part that's really important right up here, this has got your numbers in it. So we're saving and replacing this entire trunk gutter. I've got new ones, but I would rather just put this entire piece in there. That's do that. not a problem. Is that all right with you? Okay, so you're gonna mirror the same exact cuts on the other side, and uh, the car's established at the front uh, by the frame rails in the rack, so you shouldn't have any height problems. Nothing should move when you cut this stuff off. So basically, I've given George the green light to go ahead and cut the back half of the car off. That's what he's doing now. We got a, a Miller plasma cutter that makes it a real nice, clean job. Uh, the General Lee's gonna be back uh, getting this new sheet metal before you know it. So far, the ghouls have torn down and cut apart a one-of-a-kind General Lee. The car that holds the record for the longest freeway jump of any General Lee in TV or film history. And still to come, there's more metal work, a problem with the paint, and the long-awaited reveal for this one-of-a-kind Mopar icon. Amazing. But when the Charger is taken for a test drive, will Mark's reaction go too far? How dramatic is it going to be when I call the cops on that? Our General Lee has already received its used donor front end. That is completed, it's done, it's welded off, it's metal finished. So from a standpoint of structurally speaking, that's done. We can now move to the back part of the car. Now, again, on this car, doing the big fly through the air and coming down, hitting that front corner the way it did, we've taken care of all the immediate damage, the initial damage that you could see visually with your eyes. You already know from the other ones you've done, we're gonna do full quarters all the way up to here. All right, the remnants of the outer wheelhouses, I want you to drill out all those spot welds through this quarter inner structure, just like we're getting ready to install the new pieces on it. I want you to go around, cut, trim, clean. I'm gonna start across this back panel here, removing this off of here, and then I'm gonna go down through here and use the plasma cutter and trim this out slowly on both sides, kind of drop this uh, apart from it, and then I'm gonna jack it up and finish out the cut down through here, and then I'm gonna start prying this apart from this back panel to put the new frame rail sections in. It should go pretty fast. You're ready to weld? I'm ready to weld. Beautiful. Right now, he is all finished tacking everything in place. They've already pre-fit everything, so they're just gonna go through there and begin welding, plug welding all the original holes that were once spot welds. After that, when they put the new pan on, then they can go to full spot welding. So your green light go, everything fits good. Solid. Good job, great job. Thank you. The guys right there, make it happen. The guys behind the scenes, they don't get none of the glory. You know, in addition to my favorite little monkey by Curious George, uh, Will was over here for the first time. You did. A few things I didn't have the opportunity yet to teach him, which is like engine colors and finishes. So he was a little, might say by curious about what color the engine and the General Lee went. <laughs> hmm. Orange or blue? Turquoise. Orange or turquoise. Right? On an RB engine, a 413, a 426, or a 440, they have this pad up here. So if you walk in here bright and early, all bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, and you look at that, you see that code right there with 440 behind it. What year is this engine? Well, A was 65. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So B was 66. Yes, sir. C was 67. Look at him go. D was 68. Yeah. E is 69. Perfect. And if you look down here in this lower corner, do you see those little two letters there? What do they say? I see an H. There you go. And a P. I'm assuming that's P. Yes, it's a P. That's a high performance 69. So this one goes the Hemi Orange. A great painter, taught him everything he knows, so if you're watching. All right, so we got our motor here. 
for the General Lee. It is all going completely Kimmy Orange. So it's all ready to go. That was good information that Mark gave us with the little numbers that are up there. All in all, that's still a couple hours worth of talking to him before I got the actual color for this. But I got it, motor's in here, everything's good to go. So I can go ahead and get the DP90 on this and then start to hit it with the single stage. So the Street Hemi Orange that we mix up with PPG, all we do is we mix up the EV2 Tour Red Hemi Orange exterior body color, but we leave the metallic out of it because the engine wouldn't have metallic. And so that changes the hue a little bit. It turns out a little bit reddish orange over the original one, but as soon as the engines ran for a while and it cools down, you noticed it with your turquoise one in your poop box 67 Coronet. As soon as it got hot and cooled down, it's so hot and cooled down. Sorry about the poop box thing, but... It's okay. I'm used to it. Yeah. It's a nice car. Once the metal work was done mm -hmm. and the body work was done, it was able just to follow the same suit any of the restorations would, okay? So it was... Once that was done, of course, we had the engine and everything painted. We were building the drivetrain over in the machine shop. It was time to start doing the jam work. When it comes to the jam work on these cars, some of them are simpler than others. It depends how much metal work. That car had a lot of metal work. Sure. So you've got uh, gussets and reinforcements. You've got frame rails. You've got a Dutchman panel that has to be jammed on the inside. Wheelhouses. All that has to have the sound deadener put on it before that goes into place. And then it gets the paint over the top. So right now I have the generally all masked up. It is in the booth. The quarters are off it so I can paint the inside of the quarters, the inner and outer wheelhouses, and underneath the package tray. We've heard Hemi Orange, Hugger Orange, Porch red, flame red. Nobody actually knows what color this particular car was supposed to go. We've been trying to get in touch with the guy that actually built the car. Um, I haven't heard back from Mark yet, so I'm gonna go check with him, see if he's heard back, and see if he has an answer on what color it's supposed to be. Hey boss, I got the General Lee in the booth. Do we know the color yet? Those cars were painted 1975 Corvette flame red. Okay. How do you have a Hemi orange factory charger and say no thanks? It's a sin, we, they didn't paint that thing Hemi orange. True or false, a real life car accident made it into the final cut of an episode of the Dukes of Hazzard TV show. We'll have the answer for you after the break. So did a real accident make it into the final cut of an episode of the Dukes of Hazzard TV show? The answer is true. One of the chargers used on the show was wrecked when an actor driving the car lost control of the vehicle. And instead of letting the opportunity, the film stock, and the car go to waste, the wreck was worked into the final plot of the episode and uh, made the final cut. We've heard Hemi Orange, Hugger Orange, Torch Red, Flame Red. Nobody actually knows what color this particular car was supposed to go. I got the underside buffed, I checked it to the color, and the color is off, so I'm gonna grab Mark, see what he thinks before we go any further. How's it look to you? Well, uh, the deck lid's got metallic in it. And the so deck lid's EV2. That's what I was thinking, too. So, I was gonna... so the car's a 70, even though in the show they're 69s, they had converted a 70. I talked to J.R. Burton, this, which available was available on 69, that's why it's got the E in EV2, except in 69 it'd just be V2, and 70 they have to refer back to the original date. So I was that's thinking about 60... flipping the deck lid over. Anyway, that's gonna be the wrong, wrong color. Now, interestingly, a lot of people thought that the General Lee was EV2, Hemi Orange. A That's lot what of I them think did. is crazy that they took a. They just got lucky and had an original. Yeah, deck that, lid. But how cool would that be? Or do you think the whole car was? No, this whole entire car was this. Who knows, right? Who, who could have been? But you know, panels get switched all the right. time. But this deck lid definitely started life on a car that was coded for V2. So Mark came out, agreed it doesn't match the bottom. We flipped the deck lid over, buffed the top, matches the top perfect. That's when we realized this is a true original Hemi Orange Charger which kind of sucks because if they would have just painted Hemi Orange, this person would have a General Lee factory Hemi Orange and it would still be an orange car. So kind of sucks having to paint a Corvette red. I was actually wrong. I was thinking that I was remembering what I read about the General Lees back in the TV days. Back when they were making the TV cars, I guess the cameras, the TV cameras, they pick things up differently. They show colors differently. And so back then, Corvette Flame Red, which was the color that they painted the TV cars, looked bright orange. Huh, I didn't know that. On a TV camera. But in the movie, times have changed and they use different cameras to make the motion picture, that color looked too red. It looked like it's real red. They had to paint it big bad orange to make it look like it did in the TV series when it was Flame now, Red. Now, who came up with a big bad orange? That's an AMC color. 
Um, I'm excited to paint this car, A, because it's a General E, B, it was actually in the movie, it was a cool launch car, and C, the, the body guys have been waiting for two weeks with kind of at a standstill because I haven't been on the come up with the color yet. So there's a bunch of reasons why it's exciting to get it done, but it's very nice to have this thing painted and back to the body shop, have the quarters put on. So obviously I did the texture coating on the quarter panels already. So that way, because once the quarters are put on, you can't go past the wheel wells. So now that that's done, at, when you actually paint, you're actually able to get paint all the way across, where if the car's put together, you can't do it. And if you can do it, it's not gonna be that good of a job. So this way, painting those hard to reach pieces are actually fully clear coated. It's never gonna rust. It looks like the outside of the car. So when this car's assembled, if the owner ever wants to take it apart and look underneath there, the inside looks just as nice as the outside does. So it's a huge benefit doing it this way. The General Lee was able to just follow the exact same, once the metal work was done mm -hmm. and the body work was done, it was able just to follow the same suit any of the restorations would, okay? So it was, once that was done, of course we had the engine and everything painted, we were building the drivetrain over in the machine shop. You just do it once. I think that's the best part about the car, not well, the fuel Well, do you remember door. the General Lee doing it over and over again? So the car is all done, right? Ready to go. Customers are coming in to look at it, check it out. I walk in, the place is like a ghost town. Everybody's gone? <laughs> Everybody was gone. Nobody around, I'm calling, I'm yelling, I'm walking through the place, this is really strange. Then I notice the General Lee's gone. And when the General Lee's uh -oh. gone and everybody's gone, there's only one culprit, and that culprit happens to be a car thief. That's right, that's right. She's no Angelina Jolie from Gone in 60 Seconds, let me tell you that right now, all right? <laughs> She took that stuff. I know she did. She stole the last one. She stole this one. So I called her ass. Hold on, you guys. My dad's calling. Well, that's going on. Oh, no. Hopefully I hold on, but... Hello? Here he comes. Hey, where are you at? Yeah, Will and Dave are with me. You need to ask permission to do the test drive. Why wouldn't yeah, we... Just ask. Oh, you my... Just ask her. So in we're, your mind, you just take the car, any car, anytime you want, and you don't have to ask permission. Problem. Dad, you're really being dramatic. How dramatic is it going to be when it's I call the cops on you? This is part of our job. This is part of our job. We got to test drive the car. Oh, God. He just hung up on me, and he told me he's going to call the cops. Like, really? Oh, OK, Dad. No, he's Don't going worry. with the Grand Theft Auto thing. I know, again. It's like, it was just so played out. We've already done this, Dad. You know what's going to happen. He's going to call the cops so many times that they're not going to respond yeah. anymore. <laughs> I walk in, the place is like a ghost town. So then I notice the General Lee's gone. So I called her ass. Dad, you're really being dramatic. How dramatic is it gonna be when I call the cops on your ass? County's cutting their budget. That's a 78 Monaco.
got a driver's license and registration, boy? Uh, no, officer. I you got no driver's license? No. You know, you got to have a driver's license and registration and insurance to drive a vehicle on a public highway here in Springfield, Oregon. So why don't you all step out the car for me, okay? Are we really doing We'd like this? to have a little Seriously? chat with you. Passenger, step out, put your hands on the roof. Oh, Passenger in the back, get out, put your hands on the roof. All right, Keep them where I can see them. Yeah. yeah. All right, everybody walk around here. What's this? Why What's are you this? wearing little tiny? This is an officer of the law outfit. Why Did are your breasts your sticking size? out? I don't know, why are you wearing dental you floss for like shorts? A on a I'm wearing it. I happen to be wearing, what? <laughs> <laughs> what are you laughing about? Four what? eyes? What? The extra glasses, they look like four eyes. I don't have extra, they're just a pair. Dave, how you doing, man? Good, how you doing? Good, good. You're out driving the General Lee without Boss Hog. Well, more of a <laughs> Roscoe P. Coltrane looking Mojo Potato. What are you doing driving my car? Did you ask permission? So do we have permission? Yeah, you guys can drive okay. the car if you'd like to. Thank you. She's hopped up over 150. <laughs> oh, God. You know what that is? No. Hopped up over 150, that's from the movie uh, Dirty Mary Crazy. Oh, yeah, Dirty Mary Crazy. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah, police that's... car, the only police car that could catch them. Yep, had that little scoop on the hood. That was awesome. Yeah. yeah. Great. Who are you going to be with that little old Slant 6? Yeah. What's that from? Wow, oh, Slant 6. <laughs> You oh, think from you could Joe really Dirt. Be Joe Dirt. Joe Dirt. That's right. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. Okay, I got another one. Yeah. You know the one in uh, Smokey in the Bent? You know the part in uh, Smokey and the Bandit when uh, Jackie Gleason's mad at his son-in-law? You know, all fun and games aside, and you know I like to have fun, it's fun torturing people. With that done, it's time for our owners to come out and take a look at the car. Well, hey. hello, oh, it's nice to meet you. Nice, nice, nice to, to see meet you. you. Yeah. Hey, Royal. Big John. Good to see you, buddy. You doing, buddy? It's been a long time. Hey, John. I mean, let's go see it. You want to go see <laughs> it? We're ready, man. Right. We're ready. So, you know, these, these reveals, no matter how many of them we do, they're always a bit of a nail biter. The best part. But it's the best part. I agree. There it is. It's the culmination of all your hard work and all of their patience and their, their investment. Their anticipation. It is. And in this particular case, it went off without a hitch. Oh, this is perfect light. Oh. This is beautiful. Sun's that is up. Amazing. Is that absolutely gorgeous? I love that Mark. big bad orange. You nailed it, man. You nailed it. It was a beautiful day. They couldn't wait to see it. They were running out the back door at it. It was absolutely stunning sitting there. And they fell in love. And that made us fall in love. It's unbelievable. This was it's the total gorgeous. General Lee. And it's just perfect. The color's perfect. PPG single stage paint, acrylic urethane. There's nothing like it. It looks wet when it's dry. It's at the end of the day, you know, we're, we're not doing all this for the dough. We're doing a lot of it because we love the cars and, and we love the people. So that was awesome. That, that is truly a good thing. Absolutely but, gorgeous. Yeah, the same guys that built the roll cages for some of the movie cars and stuff came down and installed that one for us. Got the vector wheels that were actually on the car when it the did same, the jump. The same wheels? Those are the wheels. That jumped 174 feet? They did. Feet? And they were beat to death and they were bent and chipped. And so we sent them out and we had them completely yes. redone, balanced, had the new tires put on, which those are the correct ones for the That's movie. That's amazing. I can't believe, I mean, this car was bent up and twisted and Oh, we had a hard time. And, if you go back and you talk to uh, the body man about that, this thing was shoved up to here. So we had to get all the sheet metal off it and make direct pulls just down on that A-pillar to get it square again. But that's your original roof right there. Golly, buddy, I cannot like thank you enough. Oh, really I love that steering wheel. It just wheel. came out perfect. You know, this car came out of Kansas. Originally, it was in a field in Oklahoma. We bought it off eBay. We brought it back to Denver. I called you. I think you called me back in 10 minutes when you heard I had a general lead. Yeah, yeah. That's Next thing step. I know, we sent it up here, and here we are a couple years later, wow. and it just looks amazing. You nailed it, Mark. I like they did the steering wheel with the uh, the actual one they used in the movie because it was different than the TV series. Just exactly. Just little details they changed. We tried to keep some old and some new, and, and you know, you and I talked about that at great length. What do we do? Do we restore it to the movie card? Do we restore it to the TV? And for the most part, it's movie, but there are some throwbacks to the TV in there. Certainly, I, this car is built out exactly like a 69 Charger RT. So if you go over here and take a look, which you haven't even seen yet, under the hood, 
If this was an XS29 L code, which is a 440, that is what you'd have. So just a few things to point out here, because I know you're you're into all kinds of cars, not necessarily diehard Mopar. So I'll point a few things out that are that are very, very correct about what you're looking at. So we went with an actual date coded 69, 440 Magnum, 375 horse, and it's all dressed out. Date coded spark plug wires, date coded PCV hose, date coded heater hoses. This is an original 054 radiator, which would be correct for a 69 big block with a 26 inch. We had to change the core support out because it was destroyed. And so when we did, we put in a 26 inch. Both aprons have been replaced and portions of the firewall. Because if you recall, this thing had that big boxed in square yeah, channel. The support when they did that in. jump. And I wanted to try to preserve that, but when they put that in there, it never once held a complete 440 because it wouldn't have had room for it. So when I was trying to mock it in place and mock the 440 in there, it just didn't work. And so we lost that little bit of inner structure nostalgia. What, what's this, Mark? These are authentic General Lee horns, which we actually went to the trouble wow. of sourcing them and getting them to, to function correctly. If you would like, I would be more than happy to play that for you. Step back. That's perfect. great. That's awesome. That is perfect. Hey, we should go take off. You guys should hop in there and go for a ride. Oh, Let's go I'm tear ready. it up. Oh, I oh. feel like Bo Duke already. So, you know, it was a great reveal. They were very happy with it. Um, we were happy to have it done because, again, that poor car did get put on the back burner and took about twice as long as far as the overall time. But, yeah. It was one of those ones that, w at the end of the day, you know you did the right thing, and you know that the owner was super happy. Look at this baby. Yeah! It's just incredible. I feel like I'm Bo Duke. 16 and just got your driver's license again. Absolutely. Look, they even got the horn working. Oh, that's the best part. <laughs> Listen to it. Shift's fantastic, hard. Well, it's smooth, too. Probably end up being one of your favorite toys. Absolutely. We waited a long time, but it was worth the wait. It's absolutely gorgeous. Almost ready to relax, but I, in my mind, he was gone an awful long time. Oh, he was just having fun. One thing about my friend Mark, he will always go the extra mile for that gag, even when it comes to buying a police car. You know what? I am willing to go the extra mile because I'm a committed guy, all right? I bought that police car for the exclusive purpose. In the event, my daughter, the car thief, pulled what she did. See, that's what you call an anticipation move. So that was the reason behind it. But yes, I was dedicated to it. She's gorgeous. She's perfect. I love it. Fantastic. Me or the car? Yeah, you. <laughs> it's perfect. I think they did a fantastic job. We really appreciate it. You guys nailed it. Graveyard cars. Here's the thing about a joke. You got to know when to let it go. All right? You don't just keep after it. There's a cop back there. Let's just go for it. Yeah, no, I better pull over. Trouble, boy. What you out doing, running a shine?